Hello, this is Commander Brewski back here this morning at the Buckyball Pub. And I'm here to report, as we enter the final few days of the race, things are coming together nicely. There's been a bit of changing near the top of the leaderboards, and a lot of commanders improving their times throughout. Which is wonderful to see. That's the entire point of being here, isn't it? In regulation, we had a few entries. First up is Sir Boundness, who when asked for comment about his run, simply said, And I quote, Woohoo! And woohoo indeed, as it was another substantial improvement to his time, and he jumps ahead of Fearless F21. Next up, we have Edelgard, who had a truly frustrating run as the landing gear was messing him about and getting caught on things, costing him valuable seconds. All of which unfortunately landed him one second behind Kevin and Alec, agonizingly close to the podium positions. I say Kevin and Alec, but no more Alec, who's off for a nice river cruise in the soul system, and hammered out a few runs this morning, in what would be his final attempt at the course. Farewell, Alec. And he managed a very nice improvement of 31 seconds to take his time to 23.17, not quite close enough to topple Skur, but he will be nervously watching now. I know the pain of that one second. Sulu... Couldn't you be just a little slower? Uh, and I got noticed that Race Control is waiting on confirmation of another entry from Triple Razor, as some gremlins got into... Excuse me? What's that? Ah, we have confirmation that the gremlins have been eliminated and the leaderboard has been updated. Well done, Triple Razor. In Lionheart Eyes at 31 seconds. Moving over to Unlimited, there's a lot of action. Oh, I'm sorry, the gremlins are reporting something to me. What? 31 and? Oh, the gremlins have informed me it's 31 minutes and 3 seconds. Not 31 seconds. Triple Razor, if you manage to do a run in 31 seconds, that would be very impressive. Uh, moving over to the Unlimited board, we've got loads of action and tons of improvements. J-Space is first up, and they ditched the big ships for the Majestic... And I think we'll all agree, Type 6. Uh, no, the Type 6 is a flying brick. I don't understand. It, <laughs> and that's not a good thing. I know everybody loves it, but I... No, no. All the Type 6s just fly like houses, which is not a thing that flies. Um, and in doing so, managed to knock over three minutes off their time and move ahead of Triple Razor. Air Route 66 was also in an improving mood. And although not moving up any places, they're creeping closer to Darkfire. Next, a new entry from Sinister Hedgehog, who wanted to have a go with the course in Unlimited, despite the ship loadout not being optimal. It's still a DBX. DBX is a classic great ship. Silver Tongue around the course in 19 minutes 9 seconds, which slots him in front of Tobias. Except that Tobias comes along as another commander playing musical ships, and this time took to the course in a dolphin. He seemed more comfortable in this one, and made a nice improvement, and was so close to breaking the 17 minute barrier. But as it is slotted in front of Sinister Hedgehog with 1901, musical ships can be an effective strategy. But you know what's even better than musical ships? Just starting out in the best ship. Next up we have Sulu, a fish, flying a dolphin, a mammal called Seagull Bird. It's wonderful how like seagulls are just an amazing, great trope. And they're so famous because, I mean, everybody knows what a seagull is. And... I'm definitely sure that won't trigger absolutely anybody. Despite all the paradoxes, I do wonder how long it will be before Sulu starts accepting he's a good pilot who's now regularly challenging the top positions on the leaderboard. Oh, oh, that's going to take approximately forever and a day. We've got some serious imposter syndrome going on there. He thinks he might have been possessed, but however it was managed, he improved by 30 seconds to bump him two places up into second. Unfortunately for him, it didn't last too long because, as always, the great, the one and only Shay was back on the course. You might think at this point he'd be swapping ships, but no, he's stuck in the Type 7 and somehow wrestled around the course, nearly breaking the 18-minute barrier and putting himself five seconds ahead of Sulu. I honestly have no idea how that's possible. I don't have any idea how that's possible either, and I am terribly scared because if he can be 20 seconds behind me in a Type 7, who knows what would happen if he got into a ship that wasn't just a giant pile of concrete. Anyways, there's three days left in the race. Good morning, and have good racing, Buckyballers.